Hello fans, welcome to Upstate Spartans Insider. We roll in with Coach Chris Hawkins another week of the extremely successful and continually climbing Upstate softball program. And Coach, I use that terminology because your RPI of late continues to go very strong and you find yourself within a couple of conference wins of going ahead and clinching at least a share of the conference title. It's been a pretty good stretch for you, has it not? Yeah, we played well as a unit and uh, going down the home stretch, we seem to be getting some of the things back that we struggled a little bit last week. And I know when I say struggle, everybody looks that we still won a game, but we weren't executing and doing the things well we had to do, but we're back on track. The RPI looks good. Uh, hopefully it'll continue to rise. Playing South Carolina last week, got Georgia this week to allow us to play some of the bigger games to help with the RPI while we're still winning uh, is huge for us. Some of the fans may be sitting at home thinking, what in the world's all this talk about RPI? Explain why that becomes so important with where your team sits over the last couple of years. Well, last year in the Atlantic Sun, we got uh, two at-large bids in the conference championship. A lot of conferences would just get the conference champion as an automatic bid going into the, in the uh, NCAA tournament. And if your RPI is high enough, which I can't really say a magic number, uh, if you're 40 or less, you're looking good at maybe getting a bid if you do not uh, win your conference championship. So that's extremely important because our conference at any, any given time, anybody could step up and win that and still be able to go is kind of huge for us. So we want to try to hopefully keep climbing that RPI. Well, let's talk about why the RPI is so high now, and that's been the way your team has played across this 2015 season. Now we've worked our way into the depths of the conference schedule, getting ready to close it out. You have just the one loss against Jacksonville thus far. The conference slate has been kind to you. What do you see is, is uh, that your team has done exceptionally well that's put you in the position you're in? Well, Lexi's done a good job all year pitching. Amanda's been spot performance for us pretty well. But when you're up seven, eight runs in the second or third inning, it really puts a hit to the other side dugout. And we've been fortunate to really jump on some people early and make it kind of difficult for them. So uh, I want to credit to the ability to hit the ball well, to hit it timely, and to get the runs in when we need them. You mentioned Lexi Schubert picking up her 300th career strikeout in recent days. And when you talk about that offense, you have to talk about Shelly Robinson. She seems to, on cue, continue to work her way up the ladder in the record books. Now the all-time runs leader in the history of your program. We talked the last time we visited about her selection into pro softball. What can you say about Shelly Robinson and her leadership on this team? Well, I wish she had four more years, but she does it. Um, just wow. You know, this is a kid that don't need hardly anything from me. She just needs support. It's from very few times. She's a good teammate. She's a good leader. She's a good player. She sets an example, and she understands that it's a very fun thing that she likes to do. So. You know, when she's out there, I feel very good about our chances. And when she's at the plate, you know, she might not come through every time, but I don't know who does. But when we really need her, there's a, there's a good hit waiting for us. The surrounding pieces are there as well. She's one of now nine players all time and four current players on your roster who are in a 100, 100, 100 club. That's RBIs, runs, and hits. And Dana Landers slammed her way into it as a recent member this weekend. How about that moment? Yeah, all four of these kids have started from since their freshman year, and they've had the privilege of moving up and getting better and better and better. And, and they're playing extremely well right now, and it's awesome for all four of them, you know, to be able to be into that club. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a testament to how hard they work and how hard they're able to, one, play day in and day out. That's a lot of games in three and a half years that these kids have played. And, and for them to play with a little injury or a little bit of things not going their way and just continue to move on is awesome. Well, you talked about the RPI and the schedule and what it's done for you. It gets no easier moving down the stretch. You're going to have a game sandwiched in between against Charlotte, which is more of a local rivalry for you, but two big conference series to close things out against Lipscomb and Northern Kentucky. What has to happen there in your estimation for your team to be ready to roll into tournament play? Well, for Lipscomb, uh, they're a very good team. Their record might not be exactly where it needs to be, but they play the toughest schedule in our conference. They played a lot of big, a lot of big programs. So they're going to be tough to beat. They have two good pitchers. They have some good hitters. They steal a lot of bases. Uh, it's going to be a challenge for us. But you know what's on our side of the field is all we worry about. And we do what we do. And if somebody beats us, they beat us. But you know they're they're a good team. Northern Kentucky comes in to round out our series, and we need to just stay focused about us and what we're doing and what we're trying to accomplish and not really worry about what's on the other side. George is another fun day for us. Nothing to lose, everything to gain. Uh, good day for us to get after it. UNC Charlotte, um, you know, they're going to be playing pretty well against us. Uh, you know, everybody wants to do well locally against us, especially here. So it'll be a good battle for us too. It's some good games uh, getting us ready for the, the ASUN tournament. The next time we talk to you, we will be ready for tournament play. What would you like to see your team address, if anything, before you move into that tournament action? 
Uh, I want to get everybody healthy again. We got a couple banged up. Caitlin Jager is out. Uh, hopefully, get back by the Lipscomb game. Our second baseman, but just to stay healthy, to stay motivated, and not worry so much that the end's near, but just worry about how far we can go and concentrate on the task at hand. Folks may not realize how hard it is to one attain success and then maintain it. Great job on your part and congratulations on another outstanding couple of weeks in women's college softball. Thank you very much. And now for this week's first Get to Know Your Spartan segment, we caught up with Jasmine Polite. Let's hear from Jasmine. Hi, my name is Jasmine Polite and I'm on the cross country and track team and I am a senior. Competing all year round, um, it was difficult at first, especially when you first uh, come in from being in high school and you're running three seasons instead of two. Um, but I've made it work and it's really fun. I've been fortunate enough to set some records and be a part of the staple of building our program. And I'm sure all of my rest of my teammates can agree that it's, it's exciting and it's great to make your mark as a Spartan. The person that's been the biggest influence on my life is probably my grandfather. He passed away when I was five, but I still think about him all the time and he's always in my thoughts. My favorite food is spaghetti and just red sauce, no meat, just spaghetti and red sauce. I like tofu too, it's really good. My favorite actress is Sandra Bullock. She's, I think, the most amazing actress and she's really modest and she's really charitable, but of course people don't know that because she doesn't tell anybody because she's modest. So I, that she's my all time favorite, hands down. Since I'm a communications major um, and I'm graduating soon, I think I'm probably gonna focus on either working for another university or high school and do maybe some compliance work and make sure that kids are able to get into college and make sure that they have all their work done before they get into college. Or I might wanna do some event planning for a university as far as like athletics. Always good to hear from those on the track and field team. Thank you for your time, Jasmine. We'll break away and come back with more Upstate Spartans Insider right after this. For 35 years, the Atlantic Sun Conference has supported its member institutions in their commitment to the hard work, dedication, and determination of building winners for life. As the A-Sun aggressively seeks to expand opportunities, its student athletes and the institutions they represent stand among the nation's best in academics, athletics, and service to their communities. At the A-Sun, the aim is the successful balance of student and athlete. The Atlantic Sun Conference, at its best, building winners for life. Welcome back to Upstate Spartans Insider, now joined by head baseball coach Matt Fincher. And coach, I guess the headline surrounding your program right now is the weekend conference series victory against the Stetson Hatters. You pitched well, you hit the ball well. It seemed like your team finally played well in all facets. Is that the way you felt? Yeah, I, I did, Jason. Uh, we uh, did pitch. We pitched very well. Uh, there was a, you know, one inning in the first game where we didn't do so well. But after that, uh, you know, we performed great. and. Um, you know, we got enough hitting and uh, defense was solid uh, for the most part all the way through and it was a good series win for us. What did you see from your young arms, Blake Whitney and Zach Manupelli, who ended up giving you wins on Saturday and Sunday? Well, I mean, they're trying to make adjustments. I mean, obviously, you know, they are young and, and they're, they're working on uh, things and particularly they're breaking balls. Um, you know, I saw uh, Manupelli had better fastball command, so I was happy to see that. Uh, so, you know, they're just continuing to work on what they're doing and, and uh, getting a little bit better and, you know, did well enough and we're fortunate enough that we won this weekend. Maybe the most impressive thing is the way your bullpen held the lead in late in the games especially. And then you go back to some of the games uh, across the course of the midweek as well where your bullpen has fared really well of late, Coach. Uh, you know, LaSalle has, has uh, last six or seven times out has been good and, and he's, he's important. And Berkland came in yesterday and and uh, perform very well and we need him uh, and, and there are other guys too that I'm hoping as we go forward here uh, you know we'll get some innings out of them out of the bullpen and, and we'll look back at it at the end of the season and say you know what our bullpen wasn't bad at the end. Offensively you were led by Eric Samples your senior second baseman drove in four of your eight runs on Saturday and that was just a portion of what he did talk about his play over the last week or so. Yeah he, uh, he's definitely been playing well here of late um, you know he did get four hits on Saturday but I told him at, at the end of the game that I was uh, most happy with the double play that he and Fickus were able to turn I believe it was in the eighth inning uh, that, that was a key spot. And, uh, but he's, he's been playing well and, and you know, he's, he's the older experienced guy on the team and we're going to need him to do that right to the very end. 
James Folks did make a reappearance across the course of the weekend, and we saw Zach Kreider up throwing in the bullpen. Those are two guys that have been a little banged up. What's their situation moving forward? Well, you know, Folks was able to play yesterday, so uh, that, that was good, and I, you know, I expect him to be okay. Um, Kreider, I think, will be back, you know, definitely by the weekend, so I think he's, he's ready to go. So uh, it'd be real good to get those two guys back. Uh, hopeful they can help our offense and, uh, you know, keep us going. You end up in a better spot right now than the predictors and the prognosticators had you. You still one away on the road at Kennesaw State, still another away on the road at Florida Gulf Coast since the last time we visited, and then the weekend series victory over Stetson puts you in a pretty good spot. How do you feel about where you sit in the conference standings? Well, I'm, you know, I'm happy. I mean, you know, you look at the, uh, before the season, you look at the schedule and you see, hey, first two series, you're going to Kennesaw, you're going to Florida Gulf Coast. And, you know, we were able to compete well in both places. We felt like we had a shot at both Sunday games down there, uh, you know, a chance to win both those series. It didn't work out for us. Um, you know, so I, I would have to say, uh, given the structure of our schedule, that we are in a decent position right now. Um, you know, we do have uh, three more home series, uh, and, and we're going to have to play as well as we did this weekend, if not better, uh, to, you know, to get into the A-Sun tournament, and that's certainly a primary goal of ours. And, and uh, you know, I think the guys are improving. They're realizing they can compete with these teams. Uh, things are going uh, in, a, in a good direction right now, and you just keep your fingers crossed. You keep plugging away at it, and, and, and you know, we, you hope that we can continue to improve. Things get no easier for you schedule-wise moving forward into the coming week. You get those in-state rivals, upstate rivals, you might say, as you go to Furman, you go to Walford in the Hub City rivalry, and then you're going to keep on rolling in the Atlantic Sun Conference with Lipscomb next weekend. Walk us through the games that are upcoming. Well, you know, we played Furman once, and, and they uh, beat up on us a little bit down at Fleur Field. So, uh, you know, we got rained out against them here last week. Um, so, you know, hopefully we'll be ready to go. and, and uh, you know, they got a good team. I mean, they uh, hit the ball well against us. Wofford, um, you know, has a, is having a very, very good year. Uh, they're going to be very aggressive. Um, you know, I know they've got a good team. And, uh, you know, those are always, seem to always, always be close games with Wofford. So, you know, looking forward to that game. And then Lipscomb, uh, I think, lost two out of three to North Florida this weekend. And, and I know they've got a good team. They've got a good pitching staff. They're going to hit enough. Uh, you know, that's, that's going to be a tough series for us. So, yeah, the schedule's not getting any easier. That is for sure. Well, you're raising some eyebrows already. Congratulations on a great weekend this past weekend. Hopefully it can continue. All right, thanks, Jason. Our final Get to Know Your Spartan segment has us catching up with Ramon Simonetti from Men's Tennis. Uh, hello, my name is Ramon Simonetti. I'm a junior at USC Upstate. I'm on the men's tennis team, and I'm from Brazil. The main reason why I came from Brazil to USC Upstate is the fact that back home we don't have college sports, so you either turn pro or you stop playing to go to school, and I found that here was a perfect opportunity for me to keep doing something that I really like, that is playing tennis, and at the same time get an education and afterwards maybe try pro if you want or just follow with your career. For me, the biggest difference from Brazil and the U.S., the main one is food. It's just so different. It took me a while to get used to it, and now I actually like, but it started was a struggle, and the fact that the sports here is very different as well. Back home we have soccer, that's the biggest one, and here's like basketball, baseball, and football, and it's very nice, and I found it good to have this diversity here. My favorite tennis player is definitely Gustavo Kirten. He was number, number one in the world, and I grew up watching him play, and I have the opportunity to practice with him and watch him practicing a lot of times, and He's a really nice person and everybody likes him, but the way he plays was just amazing. So for me, that's the biggest uh, influence in tennis is Gustavo Kirten. Who was better in their prime, Rafa Nadal or Roger Federer? That's a really tough question to answer, but I think that Roger Federer at his prime, he was better, honestly. And I really like him a little bit more than usual, so I'm kind of biased to say it, but I would say he's the best on his prime. If someone made a movie about my life, uh, I would pick Al Pacino to play it because I really think he's an amazing actor and I like all the movies he has done. He does a really good job and I think that's why I would pick him to play me. The biggest influence in my life is definitely Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm a believer so for me everything I do and I try to accomplish is for him and for me he's the biggest example as a person 
that live in this earth, so I really try to follow his steps. Thank you, Ramon. You'll want to stick around. We have plenty more on Upstate Spartans Insider on the other side of the break. People know you and they get to know you on a personal level and they know your abilities. And this is really a place where I have seen, and I mean this, this is a place where I've seen students come here and, and really try to figure out who it is that they are. Is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? And I think every college kid go through that. But being here at Upstate and being a part of so many different programs, I know what my purpose is. And I can say that with confidence. You don't get lost in the crowd at Upstate. USC Upstate is a place where people can discover themselves. And now it's time to take a look back at the last couple of weeks in Upstate Athletics. Spartans clinched a spot in the Atlantic Sun Conference Tournament in men's tennis with wins of 6-0 over Lipscomb, 7-0 over Northern Kentucky, and 5-2 over Kennesaw State. In track and field, the Upstate women 4x100 meter relay team won the Terrier Relays, and Jake McCown broke his own school record in the 400 meter hurdles at the Terrier Relays. One of our favorite parts of the show is always Alex Love traveling around campus to find out a little more of what's on your mind. He catches up with students and asks them how they handle the pressure of exams. Take it away, Alex. We're here outside the sub connection on campus and I've got Daniel and Emma with me. Guys, how are you today? Pretty good, A Love. How are you? Doing well, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> good, good. So exams are coming up with just three weeks left of school and we want to go around campus asking students to relieve some stress preparing for them. What do you guys do to, to just feel calm going into exams? Um, every now and then I get out with the bros and I get out with Emma and we go to the soccer field, we play pickup and stuff. But other than that, we pretty much just hang out, throw the football on the streets and stuff, you know. Anything you'd like to add to that? No, nope, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I'm Alex Love reporting for Upstate Spartans Insider. We're here by Jasmine's Cafe and Bakery, and I'm here with one of the tennis stars here at USC Upstate, Ramon. Ramon, how are you today? I'm pretty good, thank you. Good, good. So, exams are coming up with only about three weeks left of school, and we want to go around campus asking students, preparing for exams, how do you relieve stress to know you're ready? Uh, I like to sleep as much as I can when the time I'm not studying and try to do different stuff from studying and playing tennis. So I try to play golf, maybe go to the movies and hang out with my friends. Just relax. With only three weeks left in the school year, we want to go around campus asking some students, with exams coming up, what do you do to prepare for the exams and relieve stress so you know you'll be ready? Well, for the exams, I do flashcards as I'm doing now. And to relax before the test, I like to listen to music or take a nap. Um, I usually do a few study games and then to relieve stress I usually just kind of sit and listen to music and watch some Netflix. What do you do to relieve stress while preparing for your exams? Well mostly I like to go hiking up in the mountains. Well for me I get a lot of nap time in. Um, I guess I eat well. Um, they give a, gave us the little sandbags in the CLC and those are a good stress reliever so yeah. Nothing makes your grades shine like nap time. I'm Alex Love reporting for Upstate Spartans Insider. Thanks, Alex, and the best to everybody who has exams around the Upstate campus in the coming days. And now looking ahead to the next couple of weeks in Upstate Athletics, you'll want to keep an eye on Ryan Cornfield making a push for a possible individual invitation into the NCAA Regionals. And as you can see, there's plenty of other action here on campus and around the country as both men's tennis and men's golf will be playing in their respective A-Sun Championships, along with many other opportunities for you to come out and see the Spartans. For our primetime performers this week, we've selected a duo of baseball pitchers. Blake Whitney and Zach Manupelli both went six innings deep into the baseball games and helped the Spartans clinch their first series win in A-Sun play this past weekend against the Stetson Hatters. All right, fans, that does it for this edition of Upstate Spartans Insider, but we'll look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks when spring sports wind down and conference tournaments continue. Until then, have a great time, everybody.